So we've got a triangle with um, vertices A, B, and C, and we're using the matrix M to transform P onto its image T dash, and we're this time fold the um, coordinates of the image rather than the coordinates of the original plane. And it just wants you to work backwards to work out what the original coordinates of A, B, and C are. Okay. So usually what you would do is you do the matrix M times by the triangle T, the, the um, coordinates of triangle T, and you would end up with the image dash. This time we've got T dash and we want to work out the T. So what I'm going to do is multiply by the inverse of M on the left. And then that will get me the coordinates of T. If I do the inverse of M on the left times by M, that gives you the identity, which is with T. And remember, for matrices, it does matter which side you multiply on. So if you do on the left, on the left hand side, you have to do on the left, on the right. I'm going to do this all together in um, one big matrix with the um, coordinates of the image, but you can do them individually if you like. It's um, so this is four minus one, two, one minus one times by the coordinates of four, three, four, ten, and minus four, minus three. With it being a purely numerical matrix, it is absolutely fine for you to type that into your calculator um, and get the answer out. Um, well, I'll recap finding the inverse of a two by two. Um, right here. So doing the inverse of a two by two, first thing to do is to work out the determinant of that matrix. So the determinant of this matrix, multiply the elements of the leading diagonal, and then subtract the other elements multiply together. So this one has a determinant of seven. Then the inverse of a two by two, you um, divide by the determinant, it's one over seven. You swap the elements of the leading diagonal, and you change the sign on the elements on the other diagonal. So this is the inverse end. We can do this matrix multiplication now. So the original triangle was this inverse matrix times by these points here. I'm going to do these by hand again just to practice. Um, Doing matrix multiplication, but with these being purely numerical, you are allowed to do it on the calculator. I'm going to leave the seventh on the outside until the end. I'm hoping that all of my answers will be divided by seven. Nice. So if I do one one times this first column, that's one times four plus one times three, which is seven. Then one one times the second column, that's one times four plus one times ten, that's fourteen. And then one, one times the third column, one times minus four plus one times minus three gives you minus seven. Onto the bottom row, so bottom row times the first column gives you minus 12 plus 12, they can start give you zero. Then you get minus three times four, so minus 12 plus 40, 28. And then uh, second row times the last column, gives us 12 minus 12 again gives us another zero. Now I can divide all of these three by seven. And so finally I get one, two, minus one, zero, four, zero. <coughs> I should write these out as coordinates at the end for T. A is at one zero. B is at two four. And C is at minus one. Yeah, so I've done these all together. You could do them as individual points, but it's using the inverse matrix. Work backwards. And like I said, you can do this on your calculator if you want. But let's quickly just check it on the calculator. So remember, there's different places to input matrices in your calculator. We're going to do math first to input these matrices. So F4 for math, F1 where it says math vector, and here's where your um, best place to input matrices is. I'm going to put into my calculator this thing here. 
So I'm not even going to have worked out the inverse matrix myself. I'm going to make my calculator do it. So putting in four minus one, three, one. To do the inverse, I just need to do it to the power minus one. And then I need to times this by a two by three matrix. So you go for the M by N button here. This is a two by three. But if you're unsure which one's which, whether it's three by two or two by three, just guess. And then if it's the wrong one, change it. Uh, so it's two by three there. Let's put this in four, four, minus four, three, and minus three. It equals, and you can check we do get them. So if this was in your exam, it's absolutely fine for you to do this, but I just thought it was worth doing a bit of practice. Next, we've been asked to sketch the original triangle and the image of T. The T dash, the original, um, the image T, sorry, it has vertices at four, three. I'm just going to roughly guess these. Uh, four, ten, somewhere up here. And minus four, minus three. That's down here somewhere. So this one is T dash. That's, that's just the coordinates from question. I'm going to do a separate diagram rather than the messy and on the same one. And so let's plot this one. X. So we've got coordinates at one zero, minus one zero, and at two four. Not very good scale, but it'll do. This is the original triangle. Finally, this wants us to show that the area of the image of T is equal to the area of T times the determinant of M. I'm going to make a bit more space on here. I'm going to clear some of this. Right, first thing we've already uh, calculated the determinant of M is seven. So I don't need to do that again. And then I'm just working out the area of these triangles. So. Let me label these points up actually. So this is four, three, four, two, four, three. This one is at one, zero. Okay, area of the image of T. So I'm going to um, use half the base times the height for this one. And for this one, the base that I'm going to use is this side. There'll usually be a side that you see the horizontal or vertical or easy to use to work out the distance of anyway. So area of this triangle is a half base times height. The base is just the difference between the y coordinates of those points. So it's the difference between 10 and 3. So that base is 7. Perpendicular height of this triangle. Carry that on. Is this length here, which is just the difference in x coordinates between those points. Yeah, so it's the difference between minus four and four, which is eight. And if you work out, gives you 28 units squared you can have for the area of time. We do the same thing for the area of t, so this time. I'm going to use this side as the base. And then 
this is perpendicular height. That's a half times the base is the difference between those two x coordinates. It's two, and the height is just a y coordinate at this point, which is four. Which uses that the area of that is four. That's enough for you to show that. So therefore, area of t times the determinant of m is equal to the area of t matrix that is 4 times 7 plus 20. Have a go at the question for you over the page for me, please. Matrix 2, 4, minus 2, minus 5, uh, times that by 0.610, and you should end up with 35 minus 60. Yeah, make sure you write it as a coordinate at the end. There, these questions get a bit confusing with all the letters that they throw out. So it says the matrix B represents the transformation U, given that the transformation T followed by transformation U is equivalent to reflection Y because I find B. So there's lots of letters around here. Basically, U corresponds to B and T corresponds to A from earlier on in the question. You're doing T first, so that means you're doing the matrix A first, followed by the matrix B. So you are doing B times A is equal to a reflection line Y equals X. You can look earlier on in the pack for the Y equals X um, formula, um, sorry, uh, matrix, or you can work out yourself by transforming the points 1, 0, 0. OK, next thing to look at in this lesson is um, transformations in three dimensions. There are kind of six um, transformation matrices that you need to know that uh, corresponds to this. Sometimes they give you them in the um, question. Sometimes you need to know them. Um, I don't think they're on the formula sheet. I'll double check later on, but I'm pretty sure they're not on the formula sheet. Um, the ones that you'll need to be able to do in three dimensions are three reflections. So reflections in the planes rather than the axes. So this is in a, a plane um, the, where x equals zero. So this is the one that contains y and z. This one is in y equals zero, and this is in z equals zero. Basically, reflecting in the plane x equals zero makes your x coordinates negative. OK, so this one changes the x coordinates. Reflecting in the plane y equals zero changes y. And reflecting in z equals zero changes z. It makes positive ones negative, negative ones positive. They're summarized down here. So for these reflections, it starts off like the identity matrix. So remember, identity matrix has ones down the leading diagonal and zeros everywhere else, except the plane that you're reflecting in, that kind of position is negative. So like normally you times these by x, y, z. So like this first one, I'm changing the sign on the x's. That's why that one's negative. A reflection in the plane y equals zero, I'm changing the sign on the y. So that's why the middle one's negative because you times it by the y. Reflection in the plane z equals zero, um, change the sign on the z's, so that's why this bottom one is. Yeah. But these are not on the formula sheet. You do need to know these, I'll be able to figure them out. This example here says the transformation in three dimensions represents a reflection in the plane z equals zero. Write down the three by three matrix that represents this transformation. So it's a identity matrix, except the one in the Z position. So the bottom right one, it's uh, negative. Because we're changing the sign on the Z values. Then find the image of the point under this transformation. You're just doing the matrix multiplication. Multiplying that three by three by the vector minus one, two, three. And all it will do is change the sign of the Z coordinate. So if you use first row times the column, it just times as minus one by one. Second row times the column just times two by one. And then the third one changes the sign on that. 
So those are your three reflections that you do need to, to know. So it looks like the identity matrix, but you change the sign on each of them. The other three are rotation matrices. Now, the way that you can remember these, so these are rotations around the x-axis, around the y-axis, and around the z-axis. So whatever axis you're rotating around, you put a one kind of in that position, same as we had for like the reflection. So rotating on the x-axis, I've got a one in this top left here. Rotating around the y-axis, I've got a one in the middle here. Rotating around the z-axis, I've got a one in the bottom right here. Notice the rest of these, this should look familiar. So this is the rotation matrix that we did earlier on in the pack. So you put a one in the axis that you're rotating around. And then kind of <laughs> like cross out the row and column that that's in, that's got zeros in. And then the remaining things is the rotation matrix. This is the same for Z. Notice that Y is slightly different. The only thing I can think of is that it's because of the plus minus plus minus thing. So the Y one's slightly different in that these two have opposite signs to what they normally do. Okay. Now, like I said, I've seen a question on this stuff before where they have given you this rotation matrix in the question, but it's not on the formula sheet, so I can't 100% guarantee that they will just do that. Okay. So my recommendation is that you do spend a little bit of time learning these. As usual, thetas is measured anticlockwise. Um, but you don't need to worry about it too much. So this example two here, we've got a three by three matrix. It should look familiar. So it looks like a rotation matrix. The one is in the middle. So this is a rotation around the y-axis. And we need to work out what the angle is from the rest of these values. Yeah. So we can just have a look at the one above. But um, these far here form the rotation matrix with the um, these these two having opposite signs. But let's compare it to the one above. So we've got cos theta equals root three over two, and we've got sine theta equals a half. You solve these until you get a theta that works for both of them. Which nicely in this case, you do just get 30 for both of these. We'll want to be increased. And so this is a rotation around the y-axis, um, 30 degrees anti-clockwise. And then wants us to find the image of the point under this transformation. So we'll do the matrix multiplication. So root three over two zero zero one zero minus a half zero root three over two times by minus one minus two. The first one, first row times the first column. So we've got minus one times root three over two. So minus root three over two. Then zero times minus two, and then plus a half times one, which doesn't simplify. You can put it all over two if you want, but I'll just leave it like that. The next one, you do zero, one, zero times this, and all that does is times minus two by one, so you just get minus two. And then for the last one, you've got minus a half times minus one, which gives you positive a half. Zero times minus two is zero, and root three over two times one. It's not that nice, but that's it. I will go at the question for you. Again, I'll pop down for a bit of So it's got 19 to the next seat. Um, well, yes. Look, you multiply them together. So you do the um, second one on the left. And then the first one on the right. 